Hey guys, it's Annie as always. I am coming in with the soap that I'm excited about. Um, hoping that it stays as fluid as it is right now. As you can see, it's nice and liquidy. I did very minimal blending. Um, and I want to get it into some squirt bottles. I'm going to hopefully be able to do the swirls that I wanted to do for my lilac soap, but that got super thick. Uh, and this is a new fragrance that I found, and it was super intriguing to me. It's called Library. Um, and it's supposed to smell like old books um, and like leather bindings and just sort of an old library basically out of bottle it doesn't smell quite like how i expected to be perfectly honest um but i don't mind it and i'm definitely wanting to give it a chance um, i'm going to do uncolored brown and black swirls because i'm thinking books i want to think of what you know old pages would look like and the swirls are i'm actually if this works out i'm happy that this is going to be the swirls on this soap instead of the lilac soap because this being an old you know sort of looking like old books and whatnot um, a lot of those old books had marbled pages um, marbled inserts and like the edges of the books were marbled so I think it's super appropriate and Chris taught me a new word yesterday called incunabulum <laughs> which is a excuse me any sort of print that happened before the 15th century. So that's an old book for you right there. Incunabulum. Talk about a mouthful. Uh, we were talking about all types of words and stuff yesterday, you know, ideas of what to name this. And that's what we came up with. He came up with it. And I was like, done taking that. Love that. Staying super fluid so far, which is making me excited. Just dividing this up here. I have my uncolored in there already. It's about right. It's black going in here first. Activated charcoal for my black. That's pretty much the only black colorant that I use. You can use black oxide, um, which does turn a nice dark color. You could also use black mica, which takes a whole shit ton to turn a dark color. But I like the charcoal because why not have the added benefit of the charcoal in there where mica or and oxide is just a colorant, uh, but activated charcoal is really great for the skin. So I always use black for that. Stirn and stirn and stirn and stirn. I think that's all the way stirred in. Okay. Here's my brown. This is a new brown mica. I don't see why brown mica would fade or morph, um, but let's hope it doesn't. <laughs> This is a mica I got from like a makeup supply company, not really necessarily specific to soap, so they don't have any details on that. But it's a chestnut brown, and it's really got a nice shimmer to it. I think it's gorgeous. Is that enough is the question. That's still pretty light. Get every little drop out of my cup here. I expected it to be a touch darker, honestly. You know what? I think that's still good. I think that is still just fine. Yeah, this fragrance out of bottle. Chris definitely said he noticed leather notes to it. Um, it does still kind of smell like old pages. It wasn't exactly what I expected, that's all. Um, but it's not bad. And I'm just waiting to see what happens once it's saponified fully. It might change. Um, I was talking with my friend Jess, and she's like, that sounds interesting, but I don't know about in soap. And I'm like, you know, most people are probably going to agree with you on that, but there's got to be a couple who are going to just think it's the bee's knees. So we'll see. Staying nice and fluid, though, which I like. Uh, Indigo Fragrance, where I got this fragrance oil. They do have a lot of cold process details on a lot of their fragrance oils, but not all of them. So this one I'm taking a gamble on. I'm going to have some left over. Just a bit. I'm going to pour that in my mold now because the swirls are mostly going to be on top. And I don't want to waste any of this. I want it all in my mold. That out of the way. It's a funny color of brown so far, but I think it'll turn out okay. Get this out of my way as well. And here's my black.
tiny drop left, putting that in the mold as well. I could have probably just drizzled out of my um, beakers and stuff the whole time, but I really want the colors to be wispy in between. So I'm busting out the squirt bottles. And with the soap challenge this month, I've been using my squirt bottles a lot anyways. I got new ones. I got more because I was uh, ended up taking some of my squirt bottles and making them tie-dye squirt bottles. And that's pretty much the end of that. So needed more. I thought I might as well use them. So that's what I just drizzled into my mold so far. This is my slab mold, obviously. We're going to do some raking once I uh, get all the colors poured. So let's get to it, shall we? I'm going to fast forward through both of these because I'm really just squirting colors and squirting colors and I'll have to check back in with you when it's time to uh, rake and whatnot. All right, guys, there's my pour. I'm rotating this around because my basement floor is not the most perfectly even thing on the whole planet, so it was leaning that way. So I'll end up kind of moving it once it's fully done. Oops, we're beeping. Baby monitor, if I shut that off. I'll be able to hear if anything happens in the next few minutes. I want to take photos of each stage of my swirling, too, so forgive me while I do that as well. But here's my goal. First, we're going to zig and we're going to zag all the way down. Shoop, shoop, shoop. Then, after we're zigged and zagged, we go rake like that, peacock style. And then after that, we got my wider rake, and we're going to go choink sideways like that. So, luckily we stayed nice and fluid. I'm so excited uh, with how this has turned out so far. So, I'm going to swirl all the way down to the bottom, too, because why not? Oh, yeah. I swear I'm better at doing marbling swirls and soap than I am on actual marbling, <laughs> which is a hobby of mine too, by the way. I love it, but it's way trickier than you would think. Oh, hell yeah. All right, so there's that swirl. Let me get a photo of that. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm like anxious with glee right now. All right, gonna rake down. Gonna rake on down. Oh yeah. Oh my god, I'm like freaking out with happiness right now. I'm sorry. I want to make all of the soaps look like this. Okay, maybe this is my signature. Because you think there's so many of these big soap companies, especially the ones I see and follow on Instagram, they all have their, their shtick. They have their thing. They have the thing that they're known for. And I know I do all Castile soaps, but like, is that what I'm known for? I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Either way, this is pretty legit right now. I've got to line this up so it's kind of evenly spaced on both sides. It's about as close as we're going to get here. Okay. Get it down. Oh yeah. Oh happy dance, happy dance. I'm dancing. It's a good thing you can't see because it's super goofy. Oh fuck yeah. Oh I'm so 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 excited. Now here's the trick. Can I get my dividers in without completely ruining it? I think I can. Okay. Ooh, you know what? Before I do that, I gotta make sure. I'm on an even area, or else the soaps are going to be bigger on this side and skinnier on that side. Whoopsie. Okay. Oh, here, here. I want to stick something underneath here for a second. 
I'm looking for something. Here we go. Ooh. I don't want to pick it up by those screws because that's how it could fall apart that way. Okay, um, it's not enough. I need a little bit more. It's almost even. It's almost even. Let me see. One little bit more piece of cardboard. It's so liquidy, I don't want to screw it up. I sure don't want the mold to fall apart. I would probably die. I would probably literally drop dead. Okay. There, that's actually real darn good now. I'm pinching my dividers together. Get my rubber band out of the way. Okay. There we go. Yes. Oh my god, I did it! Oh my god, I did it. Yay. Ooh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so excited. And it just shows. Cool, cool, cool. There it is. Um, this is incunabulum. I have to still remember this word. I almost said vernacular. I don't know. I almost made up a word. But yeah, incunabulum. That is what this is called. I'm going to unmold it for you on camera too, um, probably plane up the sides a little bit as well. They'll probably need a little bit, um, but yeah, I'm really excited and we'll see how it smells tomorrow too. It's, it smells pretty strong right now um, and I don't hate it, so cool. All right, thank you guys. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow when we, when we break her out of the mold. Welcome back everybody. It's been about 24 hours, give or take. Um, and here's my incunabulum soap. I'm just now unmolding it and I want to sort of plane the edges off um, and maybe plane the top. I'm not sure yet. I think there's a tiny bit of ash on top so I think I might plane it. I love how cool the sides look when I just um, stick my dividers in. I think it looks really fun. So let's go ahead and pop it off the mold here. That one kind of popped off on its own, but I'm going to peel the bottom and that's going to, whoops, yes, yeah, speed it right up. There's another one. I love how these swirls turned out. I've been on design seeds lately to try to think of new color schemes uh, to do more raking and combing type techniques because I just love this. And when I'm marbling, I swear I can never get it to look like this. The paint never spreads properly. Marbling is really tricky. It is an art. I swear I'd go to Turkey just to be taught by a true Hebrew artist how to do it right. But hey, if I can make these kind of swirls in soap, that's all a girl will ever need. <laughs> I'm leaving fingerprints in the top here in the ash, so I'm going to try to plane the top. If it looks bad, I'm going to just stop at one, but something tells me it'll be cool. And the design goes, whoops, the design goes all the way through, so it's still going to look like this, just hopefully cleaner if I plane the top off. I can never get my dividers to be perfectly even. They always bow one way or another, so meh. What are you going to do? I bonked this one, so this will be the one that I practice plane. I love those edges. It's definitely wood grain looking on the edges. And then the middle guy. The middle guy always turns out perfect. Boop. Oh, yikes. Well, I'm just dropping everything, so hopefully planing them all works out. God, these are gorgeous. There's my center guy. These pretty edges. Bottom's meh, but... That brown faded out a lot. Like, you don't see brown. It's just two shades of beige, basically. But I'm not upset. If it would have been brown brown, it probably wouldn't look this cool. It might be too dark, so take what we can get, right? Wipe my planer off here. Just planed another soap, so it's a little sticky, but it's fresh, so it's wiping right off. 
Okay. Okay. First, I'm going to go with the rough edges from the edge of the mold. Yeah. This is pretty firm, but it's still a, a wee bit soft. Okay. So there's its new edges. Oops, I didn't even get it all over here. I've noticed I don't apply as much pressure towards the end when I'm planing or beveling, and I've got to work on that. So there we go. You know what, I'm going to, I think planing them on the top is going to be fine, so I'm just going to go ahead and try it. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Yep, not even pressure, so I'm just going to hit the other end. There we go. When you get all the way through, it almost has a suction. I've got to slide it off the edge to break that suction. There. Oh yeah, much crisper. Just for comparison. Planed. Not planed. Look at that. Yeah. Hit it with a quick, light beveling. And my slab mold, too, I don't bevel the bottoms because... You don't really need to. Actually, beveling it, it's making it kind of sticky. I'm going to set, set it aside, let it air dry for just a minute. Maybe I can go back and bevel it um, during this video. If not, I'm just going to wait till tomorrow. You guys get the idea, and I'll just post the pictures of it all beveled up. Let's go ahead and get through the planing. Actually, it's quite sticky. I might end up planing them all tomorrow. Because that's, that's leaving a lot of goop on my planer. You see that? Might be just a touch too sticky. So yeah, let me get the edges here. And then I'll go ahead and plane it off camera tomorrow. I don't think that's vital to this video. And if it is for you, I apologize. I'll make sure I tape it next time. But I don't think, I don't think it's vital. Yeah, we're sticky. We're still pretty sticky. Just get those edges real quick. That one doesn't need the edges because it was the middle. It smells growing on me more and more too. I don't want anyone to think that I dislike the scent of this. It just wasn't exactly how I expected. Um, but in soap, and now that it's like fully saponified too, I really do enjoy this aroma. It's more leathery than I expected it to be. But it does have a very reminiscent scent of being in a really old library or even just you know go into your grandparents study and just open up a book that they've had forever an old encyclopedia <laughs> people don't want to have encyclopedias anymore so open up any encyclopedia and that's kind of what it smells like This one's really bowed out. You can even tell. I'm going to try to plane just the edge so it make it a little bit more rectangular. I don't want to take too much off. That's good enough, I think. And let me hit the sign. Yeah, super pleased with these. Very sticky on my planer, though. Definitely going to wait to finish. Sides are looking kind of cool, though. Those are the sides that didn't get the divider stuck through it, so. Just the natural edge. Such a nice, like, wood grain pattern, though. Okay. Is that all of them? No, we got this one. This one's also pretty bowed out. Let me even it out a bit. Yeah. Ooh, we have a little dot of charcoal on the edge of that. It's not been blended in. Got rid of it. There we go. I did notice at one point, or actually at two separate points, my squirt bottle uh, got clogged and I had to kind of squeeze it out on my paper towel because it was clogged and I wasn't trying to have it explode all over my mold. So yeah. Again, here's one that I did plane compared to unplaned. 
It's just a little bit more crisp. And I'll finish planing them and get some really nice shots in natural light for you guys so you can really appreciate the beauty of these. This is Incunabulum uh, Castile Soap. I made it with aloe juice. There's some shea butter in there too. And uh, yeah, super, super fun. Thank you guys for watching. I plan on doing a lot more of these Ebru style raking and combing type swirls. I've got an endless <laughs> amount of inspiration, mostly from the incredible Susan Pogany, who I've mentioned ages ago back on Pinterest I found her and she does a lot of marble designs that are raked and combed like this and this is probably my favorite way of, of marbling is the designs that are all just one pattern um, a lot of the Turkish artists will do flowers which are just absolutely mind-blowing believe me I love that too there's just no freaking way I'm ever gonna know how to do that I feel like they have special paints in Turkey that we just don't have over here um, but Susan Pogany shout out to you I'm gonna be using all of your marbled pieces as inspiration for soap here so thanks and thank you guys for watching i really hope you enjoyed um and yeah give me a thumbs up and tell me what you think if you did all right see you later bye